Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Nutter Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent in the Iron Judgment expansion. It has been released, it's finally here. Another 80 cards and a buttload of new features added as well. And it got the game got a graphical overhaul in general. As you can see, there's a lot more added effects. The icons have been tweaked here and there. But as usual, with one of these, uh, one of my introduction videos. To a new expansion we're gonna go through a bunch of kegs first and explain the new uh, keywords etc uh, while we're going through those kegs so uh, without further ado let's head into the shop which is where you open up the kegs and there's shoop we like shoop right so let's open up our goodies CD Projekt Red has been so nice to provide me with a few extra kegs on top of the pack that I already bought from them so let's open up that uh, pre-order pack first so there we go, smash that back and we get the ship board, which is a really cool board we'll showcase later on in this video. And then 25 premium kegs, the Iron Judgment card back and the protector of the North skin, so rad of its skin. So that's a nice start. We're gonna head straight into the premium kegs. Of course, the ones I got were normal ones, but premium kegs will showcase the animated versions of the new cards. So let's dive in and let's discuss the cards while we're seeing them. So first one, the Iron Falcon Knife Juggler. We don't have a premium version for that yet, but deploy, give two random enemies bleeding for two turns. Nothing new aside from, of course, the shield icon on the right, which is not shield, it's actually armor. So armor is back. It was already in Gwent in the beta version of the game, but it was removed when we went into Homecoming. But armor is basically another layer of defense on top of your health. So any direct damage first diminishes your armor, and only after all armor is gone, your health starts to deplete. There's a few exceptions to this, so as you can see, bleeding actually ignores armor, which makes bleeding a bit stronger than it was before. And some cards will also be able to pierce armor, which is also very important to note. Then next up a Northern Realms card, the Redanian Knight, which is also a card from the beta version. So, and we have a few new uh, keywords there as well. So Barricade, which triggers if this unit has armor. At the end of every ally turn, boost self by one. So as long as this card has armor, it will keep getting boosted every turn. But it only has one armor, so that's a bit of a downside but when it's exposed you move yourself to the melee row and damage the strongest enemy unit by two and exposed means that it triggers when the unit loses its armor so that can happen on the enemy's turn as well so you can trigger that yourself or wait until the enemy actually damages you without killing you of course so that first boost is going to happen regardless and then the rest yeah we're going to have to see then the kikimori worker i'm going to have to check that in full so, ooh, that's a cool piece of artwork. I haven't seen all the cards yet. I haven't been able to follow along that much, but that seems... Yeah, so melee, whenever you play an insectoid, gain one armor. Exposed, destroy self. So seven health, which is a lot for five uh, provisions, but the four armor keeps it alive. So it only stays alive when it has armor. And look at that. It's I mean, you can see the Andrake, the Kikimors underneath the body parts there. There's a head, a horse, foot, and the head of a horse. Then we have the Art Fane Heavy Cavalry, so Assimilate, we've seen that, but with the added bonus of two armor. So basically what the developers told us is that the first two armor is equal to one point of health, and then every subsequent piece of armor counts as one point for provisions, if you want to check. So the three health and one for the two armor equals four provisions. So that's going to be the general gist of this. And there we have uh, that uh, animated version is available. He tries to blow on it, but it doesn't really happen. And then our special cards, we have the Art Fane Crossbow Man. Damage an enemy unit by two. Barricade, damage a random enemy unit by one whenever you play a soldier. So that happens when you play a soldier and this card has armor. Then the Dwarven Chariot play a spawn a Rowdy Dwarf on this row and Bonded spawn two Rowdy Dwarfs on this row instead. So Squirtel got their own token enemies, well units now, and those are the Rowdy Dwarfs. So doomed two health and one armor. Which is actually one of the strongest token units you can actually have in the game right now. So the Dwarf decks are getting even stronger. Um, so this can actually 
This is at least five points with two armor. And can be more. Can be seven points in three armor. Which is really nice. And then the mad charge. Look at that. Boost an allied unit by three and give it two armor. If you control a knight, also give it vitality for two turns. So a good basic card. With a bit of boost and a bit of armor. Just putting that on top of a unit. Or an extra two turns of vitality. Nothing new there. So I think I'm going to go for the Dwarven Chariot there. On to the next one. The first one, the Redanian Elite. Also a card that has returned. Deploy boost self by six. But when exposed, it actually resets itself back to one health. So again, one with a unit with seven power to start. But it goes back to one power if it's... Exposed, so if the armor is removed. So kind of similar to the Kikimor worker from before. Then the Wagon, a card from Thronebreak, if I'm not mistaken. If you control a bandit, gain zeal order, give an allied unit three armor. Well, that's two extra provision points if you can actually pull the order ability off. Ooh, that's a gold card. We're going to see that in a second. Our first new Syndicate card. So the Salamandra clan has been added as well from the Witcher 1. So a Mutant, which is also a new category. So Mutant and Salamandra Intimidate with uh, two armor. So basically similar to the dwarves in the Syndicate faction. The Brawler, I think they, the, those guys are called. Just Intimidate, but with one less health and two armor instead of, you know, instead of four health. And then the Andrega Larva. Ooh, that is a gross card. And those noises. Strive, which is always good. Deploy spawn a base copy of this unit and summon it to this row. So basically a stronger Necker with a bit of protection. Uh, for one provision extra. That's cool. And it's a really, really cool looking card as well. But the gold card. So that gives us to uh, a few ooh, looks at the gold cards. Then we have Morgvark. A heart of terror. So the human form of Morgvark. There we go. So that's, uh, that's the werewolf that eventually turned. Well, the guy that eventually turned into a werewolf. Damage an enemy unit by one. And repeat until the target is damaged. Oh, that is an incredibly strong card in Axeman decks. Well, you know, Greatsword decks. That is a cool card. Awesome. Now we have Ramon Tirconel. That's one of the three big knights in the new expansion for Nilfgaard. I think there's three cards that actually match right next to each other. And he can deploy, spawn and play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your hand and give it two armor. So again... Kind of similar to Queen Adalia, but then for Nilfgaard, which is definitely a really cool card. And then the Kikimor Queen, uh, five power Thrive card. When this unit's Thrive is triggered, boost all allied insectoids in this row by one. Incredibly powerful. So not only Thrive, but also boosts uh, all insectoids on the row by one whenever its Thrive is triggered. So if you damage this unit and trigger the Thrive afterwards, you can also get this sort of cycle going. That is really, really cool. I'm hesitating between the Kikimor Queen and Morgvarg, but I tend to play Skelligan more than monsters, so I'm gonna go with Morgvarg. There we go. Piercing Missile. Damage an enemy unit by four, ignoring its armor. So there we have our first bit of piercing damage. So it goes through armor, same way the, the image actually shows us. Then the Andrega X, Deathwish, spawn three drones on this row. And drones are the new names for the Arakas drones. So those are the same, just the one power insectoid tokens. But it does spawn a lot of units there. So that might be able to set up Glusty Warp. Because uh, the Arakas Queen has actually changed as well. We're going to go over that in a second as well. This is going to be a pretty long video, so strap in. The Armorer's Workshop, boost three adjacent units by two and give them one armor. Basic boosting card but with a bit of armor included and then the salamandra assassin nice animated card as well intimidate which is nice deploy range damage an enemy unit with a bounty by two so a bounty is prerequisite here uh, but you do get intimidate on top of the damage uh, even if you can't actually damage it if there's no bounty available but you should be able to set this up and then the middle cards are so we saw the falcon knife juggler we have tempering a nature card. Boost a unit by a five. If it's a dwarf, also give it two armor. So a really cool, a really good four provision card, I feel like. Because this is five points anyway. So that's nice. And then the Andrega Larva again. So I'm going to go for temp tempering. Another dwarf-based card. While it's not actually a 
dwarf, but it's a special card. Looks really nice. The Dwarf Berserker, there we go, another new Dwarf. So uh, Dwarfs are definitely going to be uh, top tier, I feel like. Barricade, at the end of your turn, damage self by one, then damage a random enemy unit by one as well. So as long as this card has armor, he's going to keep damaging himself on his armor, obviously, and damage a unit in return, a random enemy unit in return. Great little automatic engine there. Then Assault, another Syndicate Crime card. Damage an enemy unit by 4. If you control 2 Salamandra units, deal 6 damage instead. So that's very strong. 6 damage... I mean, even 4 damage directly on a 4 provision card is pretty strong. Battle Preparation Tactic, I think we're gonna see that later on as well. Boost an allied unit by 3 and give it 2 armor. If it's a soldier, boost it by 5 and give it 2 armor instead. So again, a conditional card based on the category of your target. And then the Art Fane Light Cavalry Deploy, deal 2 damage to an enemy if the target has armor, damage it by 2 again. So pretty straightforward. And then there we have the uh, second Nilf Guardian Knight card, and then also the Dwarven Trio. Because uh, Zoltan and his companion also got companions, also got uh, 3 cards. So we have from left to right, first Geralt Axie, there we go, the one that was missing. Deploy, purify, and reset a unit. So that is that could be potentially really big, because he has 5 health and 2 armor, which is unusual for a Geralt card. He's really high, high power aside from his ability. Then Fionnvar Garnell is a defender, and that's a new uh, keyword as well. But when he deployed, he's deployed, we spawn and play a battle preparation. We saw that before, so boost and armor. And you can do that on himself as well. And then Defender is gonna make this even worse, because Defender means that the opponent cannot target other units in this row. So targeting is completely disabled on any other units than this guy when you play him on a row. Uh, so Defender is gonna come, become really, really strong, I feel like. You have a few ways of dealing with that. It's a status effect. So you can purify it away, you can move him to another row, but that doesn't get rid of his Defender status, so you just move the problem away, or you can just kill him. But killing is going to be difficult, because this guy you can immediately boost to 7 power and 4 armor with a defender status. So that's going to be interesting. And then Figgis Merluzo is a dwarf also with the defender status, with 4 power and 2 armor. And he spawns 2 rowdy dwarves on his row as well. So those two tokens will immediately be kind of immune. But I want to I wanna get, get Geralt as well. Geralt Axie is nice, although the Dwarves, you know what, while I'm in my premium cards, I want to have those trios completely animated. So there we go, figures. We've been pretty lucky so far with our nice cards, so another Andrega Larva, then Skellige Terror Crew Axe Wielder. Damage an enemy unit by two, and if he doesn't have any armor anymore, he also does two damage again. So four points and two armor with an optional extra two when he's damaged. So again, a cool oh man, another gold card. This is this is nice. Mutant killer, another salamandra unit. Damage an enemy unit by one. And if you have seven coins in the bank, you can damage an enemy by three instead. So that's uh, seven points if you have the coins. Four or five provisions. Not the strongest card, I feel like. The condition is pretty high, but. Then we have Zoltan himself, but but don't get too far ahead. First, Gascon. Gascon Iron Falcon. Deploy, create, and play a bronze bandit card. Not bad. Not bad. Look at that. He's ha he's holding that crossbow really steady while his horse is rearing up. Then we have Zoltan. Oh, I'm a bit too quick on the draw there. But Zoltan Warrior, I was going to go for him anyway. We got Shawnee there as well. Tadak didn't get to show her, but maybe we'll see her soon. So Zoltan Warrior. Spawn two Rowdy Dwarfs on this row, if he's on the melee row, or on range, boost all allied Rowdy Dwarfs by two, which can also be very, very powerful. But his cost is a bit steep, but we'll have to see about that. Next one. Ooh, that's a purple one to start with, with Vladimir von Everick. So, uh, Olgird's brother, Olgird's dead brother, so he's a Spectre and a Bandit. Swap a unit's power with his armor, or her armor, obviously. That's an interesting one. There must be a few units that actually have very high armor and low health for this to work. Then the Stunning Blow, not the Gutting Slash, but the Stunning Blow. Damage unit by 4. If it has armor, increase the damage to 7. Ooh, that is hefty. 
And then the Andrega Warrior deploy consume adjacent units. Spawn a drone in this row for each insectoid consumed. That could be very, very powerful quickly with the eggs as well. And another nice animation there. A lovely, lovely colorful card. And then another batch of purples, Terror of the Seas. I'm gonna try not to press X this time. Terror of the Seas, Zeal, Order, Lose All Armor and Damage an Enemy Unit by that amount. Whenever you play a Pirate, gain one armor. So, that's a bit of a risky card. You either go keep him alive, but the, damage, the armor is gonna disappear when you get damaged there. Or you just go for the two damage immediately. Hmm, interesting card, but I don't feel like this is gonna be strong enough. Then the free company, boost all allied bandits by one. That's a pretty good one. Pretty good straight up bandit boosting. And bandits are actually neutral, so they can actually... It's gonna be interesting to see what faction might be best suited for a bandit deck. Because I feel like they've added all the bandit cards from Thronebreaker now. And then the Dire Mutated Hound, another Salamandra unit, but it is a beast. Barricade at the end of every allied turn, boost self by two, as long as it has armor. And when you pay, ooh, that's a hefty fee for one armor. There's probably gonna be better ways to uh, apply that armor again, especially since it's only triggers at the end of a turn. So as long as you keep reapplying armor, he's gonna keep boosting himself, which is nice. Very, very nice. So I think I'm actually gonna go for the Dire Mutated Hound. I don't see the use of the Terror of the Seas just yet. Then the Highwayman, also from Thronebreaker, deploy damage in the enemy unit by one if it has armor, damage it by three instead. So you're starting to get the gist, right? So most of these units actually get a bit of extra bonuses from dealing damage to armor units, and we get armor on a lot of units. The Mutated Hounds give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns, which again goes through the armor, or you can poison a unit. That's actually a very versatile four provision card. That seems like a good four provision card. And a lot of decks. And then the last one, we have the Iron Falcon Troubadour. Give two armor to a unit in your hand. Interesting. And that's neutral as well, so that might actually help with Squiatel decks. Because he's a dwarf as well. And then the Terror Crew Plunderer. Damage a unit by two if it's an ally. Boost self by four. Huh. That's also a really cool animation, by the way. I love that card. Look at that. That is nice. And a female pirate at that. Let's go for her. Then the Art Fain Tortoise. Exposed boost an enemy unit with the most power by three. Not that bad of a caveat for seven power. I mean, you can prepare for that and just to take out the largest unit that, when that happens. But the Dryad Enchantress, that's a, cool, a nice animation as well. The Dwarf is looking on as the Dryad is... Fixing the helmet. Give vitality to an allied unit for the number of turns equal to its armor. And she already has five powers, so that's just a bonus on everything. And then we have one new card in the middle, Radovitz Royal Guards Formation. Boost an allied unit by two and inspire to give it two armor as well, I'm assuming. That's going to be on top of the boost then, so let's go with uh, the Troubadour actually. The Boat Builders give two armor to an allied unit. If you control a ship, gain zeal. And that gives another armor, so that's that's also pretty strong. So 5 for 5 and then possible 3 armor in total, which you probably should go for. And the pirates as well, so that boosts the pirate deck even further. And then we have the Wagenberg, which is if you've played Thronebreaker, a staple pretty much. Barricade at the end of every ally turn, give 1 armor to adjacent units. So adjacent units on both sides. That's going to be a very, very strong engine unit, because that's six points you need to take away if you want to keep going. And he's going to keep giving armor to the adjacent units as long as he's uh, armored up himself. That is nice. And it's at the end of the turn, so even if the armor is removed, you can reapply it and he can just keep going. That is going to be annoying. So I feel like with armor in general, they try to shy away from get rid of the more control-based decks. Uh, we have the Iron Falcon Infantry, barricade at the end of every ally turn, who self by one, but he doesn't start with armor. So that's an interesting caveat there. And the Redanian Archer, order range damage an enemy unit by one, and you have one charge. So that's the first time I see that they run out of lines, because usually charge is on another line. And then barricade at the end of every ally turn, gain a charge. So that's cool. So he's gonna keep getting charges. As long as, and 
Combine that with Dandelion, he's, he's gonna automatically boost himself. That's nice. We started off great, but now I went through, I think, five kegs without anything new. But the Miner, Harmony, Deploy Damage an Enemy, Unit by Two. And if you control a Rowdy Dwarf, ignore its armor as well. So Piercing Damage, if you still have a Rowdy Dwarf on the field, that's nice. The Mantlet is also new, so Melee is also a Thronebreaker card. Whenever you play a unit, give it one armor and Barricade gave it two armor instead, so that's pretty good armor engine. Remember, armor doesn't count towards your point total, so, so even though these guys all give out armor willy-nilly, that doesn't count to your point total, so really, really important to keep that in mind. And then the armor Drakkar, at the end of your turn, if armor Drakkar has no armor, gain two armor. Exposed, boost self by one, and Bloodthirst, two, boost self by two instead, so... Interesting card, so every time the armor is gone by the end of your turn, he gains two armor again. And if he's exposed, so once the armor is gone, he also boosts himself by one. So that's a really great engine to combine with priests. That's gonna come in really, really nicely there. So yeah, definitely Drakkar. And we get another purple card. <laughs> My luck was running out, but One-Eyed Betsy. There we go. Another Ogroid. Damage an enemy unit by four, but if it has armor, damage it by six instead. Pretty good, but pretty straightforward as well. It is a neutral card, so that makes sense. Um, and then we also have the Sapper. Kind of missed that one. So deploy, remove a unit's armor. That is a good counter. Because that just plainly removes all armor. That's going to be an interesting neutral addition to most decks. And since it, in Throne Breaker that was actually a Lyrian card, but apparently it did at this, because you can even see, still see the Rivian coat of arms on their shoulders, but the Rivian Sapper these guys were called, but for some reason they're now bandits, even though they're still wearing proper uniforms, but yeah. Okay, there we go, and now we have the Armored Aragas. They changed the name! They changed the name, because this was the card that I was allowed to reveal, the Armored Crab Spider, so that's great. Uh, apply Bleeding to an enemy unit equal to its base power, so that's still the same. And then we also have Voimir, Deploy Boost an Allied Unit and all its copies by one and give them one armor. So that's gonna come in really handy in uh, Kedweni Revenant decks. So that's cool, but of course, I mean, I really need to go for my own card right there. Look at that animation. Just stabbed in the shoulder. Yeah, ooh, damn. It's even worse now. I mean, I, I did make that reveal video, but this makes it... Oof. Yeah, I think he's dead. There we go. Oh, we do get a low provision uh, new card again, which I haven't seen in all those kegs, which are, and I was still getting duplicates constantly. But an organic card damage an enemy unit by four, then spawn a drone in a random allied row for each point of excess damage dealt. So always four points, basically. Um, not that good of a card, I feel like. It's a bit weird, although you could spawn extra drones, you could do something with that, but otherwise, don't really see the use there. I'm just continuing, because I want to see if there's any fancy gold cards that we can continue to look at, and this is Zoltan's Company. Spawn three Rowdy Dwarves on an allied row, so it's just six for six, with three armor spread out, but pretty simple, so I'm gonna go for Voimir this time. More purples, but we've seen the first two, but this last one is the Andrega Queen. Consume an allied unit and gain its armor. At the end of your turn, damage itself by one and spawn a drone in this row. So um, pretty much a drone engine, which is still nice. It's kind of kind of as a fallback for the change in the Arakas Queen ability, I feel like, because uh, I'm gonna go for her, for the Andrega Queen. There we go. And there we go, another one. So Trollololo, which is a, a returning card. Zeal Order, lose all armor on boost and boost out by that amount. Resupply, gain two armor. So resupply is, I think, when you play a Warfare card. So that is cool, but I'm assuming that's an order ability you can only trigger once. And then you have the Greater Brothers from uh, the Salamandra Mutants again. Insanity, V2, gain two armor. Destroy self otherwise, so that is interesting. So as long as this guy has armor again, he stays alive with 10 points, so it's a great finisher with 10 points. But otherwise he's pretty vulnerable, I feel like. Um, I think I'm gonna go for... I mean, I can't go for anything else and troll a lolo, right? There we go. 
Another purple selection and we get Surrender. Remove two armor from all units in a row and damage them by two. Hmm. So that's like a stronger Lacerate. As it removes two armor as well from every unit on a row. That's pretty good. And it's the only card that I don't have yet. So there we go. Oh, and we got another gold card selection. We've got Zoltan already, but Philippa returns with Blind Fury. Damage an enemy unit by 4, then damage a random enemy unit by 3, 2, and 1. So that's, again, 11 points, but of course it's blind, so you don't know where it's going to hit. It's 11 for 11, and it's definitely not guaranteed, because the 3, 2, and 1, well, definitely the 3 and the 2 might actually hit a weaker unit, therefore uh, wasting those points. Then Zoltan Warrior we've seen, and then Savola. Savola, I think I've seen this card on Twitter. It's a really, really strong one. So Prophet 2, Tribute 9, spawn a Savola's Frightener on this row. So in total, you get an 18 for 18 if you have 9 coins. With Bedlam, with the King of Beggars as a leader, that turns into 8 coins you only need the tribute is lower and you gain two coins as well so i feel like this is a pretty strong one so it's actually uh 20 for 18 and that is might even be 20 for 17 if you only have an a tribute that's a really really strong syndicate card so i think i'm gonna go for savola there and then the second to last gag has another purple with War Council. Look at the first three cards on the top of your deck and play one of them. That's going to come in handy in Nilfgaard tactical decks, I feel like. So I'm going to go for War Council. And then we're going to end it off with my final gag out of the freaking 46 we just opened. I didn't get that lucky, I feel like. Mostly at the beginning. And this one is nothing as well. So uh, let's just get that. And we can start dismantling some stuff. So dismantling all the excess stuff gives me 960 60 scraps, but a 1380 meteorite powder. So that is all going in there. Uh, we're going to come back here soon. But for now, I just wanted to show you guys the new uh, Araka screen ability. The cards for the leaders are gone. Uh, since they officially decoupled the abilities from the leader cards, but the Arakas, uh, what's it called? The Arka Swarm ability actually changed. So now it's uh, order spawn a drone on an allied row. That's the same, but you gain two, two charges extra, so five charges. But the other ability has changed. So before it was every time one of your units is destroyed on your turn, spawn an Arakas drone. That is now changed to whenever you play an organic card, spawn a drone on a random allied row. This makes the Arakas queen a lot weaker but a bit more tactical since you can uh, choose when to play your drones and you have a few more of those and your drones are going to come in more steadily than they would have with the well they can't snowball as much as with the previous Arrakis queen uh, and I think they got one provision extra as well. I could of course take a look at some of the other new cards I think one that I really really want to have is the Draco Turtles one I saw before um, so I'm definitely gonna make that one right now. Look at that, I really want that Draco Turtle. So whenever this unit loses armor, boost self by the amount of armor lost. So if you damage this card by 4 for example, he actually loses that 4 armor but gains 4 points in health. Which is a really really strong, basically a tank card that can take hits as long as he has armor. Uh, and he doesn't die if you actually uh, if he gets exposed. And then living armor is also a cool one. So this unit's power is always equal to its armor. So it shows you 10 out of 10. But if you reduce the armor, you also reduce the health of the armor. So uh, you can't boost this card basically, which is also really really interesting. Maybe just one more of the stronger cards for so the Wygern. Uh, gain armor equal to the number of cards in your hands. If this unit has no armor, destroy self. So 13 power and it destroys itself regardless of moment that this card has no armor. So either you play this card at the very beginning, risking it getting destroyed, whatever. Or you play it at the very end when you only have one card in your hand as a sort of very dangerous finisher. Because it's 13 points, but of course, he will only have one armor. If that one armor is removed, he dies. 
So I feel like this is going to be a really, really niche card. A really, really interesting card though, how we're going to play him. But of course, if you play him, you can pull that 13 points from the graveyard with something like Osrael and stuff like that. So Wygren, definitely something to keep in mind. It could also be a very strong pass round card. Because um, you can just play it and then leave your opponent to try to catch up to 13 points. Because uh, at that point you probably have a few cards in your hand. So that will be 13 points, like 6 armor or something like that. So very, very cool card. So definitely something that will be played a lot, I feel like, in uh, monster decks. But there's a lot more cards than we just looked at. We'll probably be uh, exploring these in further videos along the coming weeks. But the last thing I want to do is make a deck and check out what we are able to do with these new cards. So I made myself a little deck. I think the only card we haven't seen yet is Covenant of Steel. So this card has Defender 7 power and at Berserk 6. So if he's at 6 health or lower, the, they gain the they gain one armor at the end of every turn. So of the end at the end of every of your turn. And then otherwise, these are the cards herein. And we're gonna play a little match with this. So you can change your leader skin from the start screen. So the start match screen. Uh, I could actually toggle, so it's an unranked match or a ranked match because that's been changed to unlock starting from level 25 and we can go straight into ranked. Here we go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to put on the ship, the shipboard. There we go. I'm going to look at that lovely thing. Classic. Here we go. So let's try a bit of a match here. We have Skellige versus monsters. So even Eridan, but with the Araka Swarm ability i feel like so yeah insects are gonna be really popular there as well but let's see uh i want to definitely have one priest the queen's card are pretty good at doing all of that as well tuyasak veteran is fine and a resurrector is also fine so grammar's lost his power for some reason I don't think I'm going to be damaged that much, so the Hemi Flaminica can go for now as well. So let's start with the Veteran. So he uh, damages himself by tree. And I'm wondering what this guy is going to do, because that's... I mean, it's a cool combination of skin and uh, ability, although I think Aridin is the basic skin for the Swarm ability. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. He just used an organic card, so that spawned him a drone. That is fine by me. Let's just put the Queen's card over here and end the turn. Let's see how far their removal goes. Let's see how far their removal goes. So we're gonna get hit there probably. But I want to get rid of his removal because usually Arakas decks don't really have that much removal because they're usually focused on spawning those drones. There we go. Piercing missile. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. Then, let's put Blue Boy on there. And do that, and the turn on that. Whenever you play an Insectoid, gain one armor exposed. Destroy self. So that's an interesting one. I'm just gonna put down the Priest. On top of the Blue Boy Lugos. And then boost Lugos. That should get us two damage each turn. There we go, that's two armor down for the Kikimor worker. And then we can use the Terrigru Plunderer to do, put some damage on Lugos as well. Since I'm gonna get that back anyway. I think he's gonna be pretty stuck with this. Because if I manage to take out that Kikimor uh, worker, he's not gonna have much man, many points left, is he? Okay. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's deploy... Um, I think, right? Damage unit, yeah, so... Damage Blue Boy Lugos with two damage. And that gets us two damage over there and boosts our crew plunderer. And now we get another two damage, which might be over there, and that destroys the worker. Was well, a bit lucky. I should uh, touch wood for that one. That was really, really lucky. Whenever a unit is destroyed during your turn, so that was changed as well. So instead of damaging a random unit uh, enemy by one, he just does that. Um, he could spawn a drone to get the Kikimor to do another boost, so that gives him three points. 
and it needs 10 to get me going. But I am in a good loop here. I have a good loop here. Um, so I think I'm just going to pause. Because next turn he's on 4 cards. So let's pause. Because I'm going to hit. So there we go. He'll be able to eat that one. But still... You know, that's not enough. So I, he kind of fucked himself there. Because he can't pass, and next turn I'm going to do uh, two points again. It's three points again, because that loop is three points. So even if he does that, it's not going to help him much. Because this gets him to 21, but of course my next turn is going to hit. He's not going to have enough, because I do three points. Although, if it hits one of the lower drones, it's going to be equal. Yeah, okay. That's good for me. That is good for me. He's boned. Ultimate Beast is boned. Well, boned card-wise. Yep, there we go. There we go. So even that, I didn't even use any of the... Well, barely any of the new cards. I'll do another one. So... Svalblood against the new Assimilate deck, which is going to be nice as well. But probably a little low on the armor. Um, hmm. Let's see. I think the Drakkar is going to be a nice starting point. Um, and then otherwise, I would love another Priest. Okay, there we go. Another Priest. The Resurrection is fine. The healing is not going to be that big of an issue right now, I think. Um, so, Drakkar, Armor Drakkar. At the end of your turn, if Armor Drakkar has no armor, gain two armor, exposed boost self by one, and Blood Thirst 2 boost self by two instead. So that's gonna be nice as a bit of a starter. There we go. And let's see what she's gonna do, or he's gonna do, because of course the leader skin is... Oh, okay, that's a... Uh, right, assassination, kind of forgot about that. Um, let's start off with the veteran then. Can be another uh, target for, of course, the assassination. But at least then those two assassinations are out of the, out of the game. So go ahead if you want to assimilate. Okay, there we go. It's a basic starting point for an assimilate deck. Then I think this is the Berserk 2. So sadly. That Terra Crew plunderer, is it? plunderer isn't gonna help me much. But if we put the Svalblood Priest over here, I could boost the Priest already, which is probably not such a bad idea. There we go. And that's gonna keep boosting itself on top of the Bruce, well, the Veteran here. Locking is also another problem, because of course I can change that in a second. But um, let's damage my own dude here by two. And that heals him up. And we got a new animation there, the hammer. And that gives us a, an 11 point advantage already. I'm hesitating whether I should use my purifies now. I think they might be coming in later. And I mean, it's just that one guy. I mean, I could purify now, but I don't have it then in the last turn. Okay. I could, of course, easily do seven points in one turn. And I have my strongest cards here already, so... You know what? Let's give the Purify a go. Like this. And Purify the Priest. So that's going to start boosting, well, damaging that guy. And there we go, we have the pause, okay. I was hesitating whether he was going to do it or not. But the Purify probably convinced him not to, or her, not to uh, pursue this any further. Because I, I pretty much had him on the ropes there. That is a good hand, isn't it? That is a very good hand. That's even... Better and that's a bit of a bug. I've seen that happen before on uh, McBeard's stream, I think. So that guy just popped out of the deck because he was mulliganed, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer. 
Bit of a bummer. I think I can, I'm fine right now. So let's just finish redrawing. Yeah, this guy is just pulled out of the deck when he's moved to the top of your deck. Which is a bit bullshit, but I mean, I could actually push, but you know what? Let's just pass. Let's just pass. I have a pretty good hand, so might as well just keep going with that. Uh, he's gonna probably try... Okay... Oh, yeah, sure, fine. So he's gonna play Albridge to boost a specific card to the top. And... Wait, what the hell happened there? He played... Ah, that was his next turn already. So he played another card to just get rid of all of that. Fair enough. He's probably doing a reveal deck. Which is fine by me, I don't really care about that. So, the healing I'm gonna go without. And then this one I could go for, but... Probably more interested in getting priests than anything else. And I didn't get any priests, but... Should be fine for now. So there we have Portal. And he drained his entire deck. Which is probably on purpose. Let's just start simple with the Drakkar then. I think that's going to be nice. There we go. Let's just start with that. If I want, I can clear the entire row at the end with Geralt Urden. Spawn and play a Brains copy of a bronze unit. And these guys have already been changed to the Dale and... Yeah, that thing. So that's going to be very, very interesting. Um, hmm. Do need to be careful now, I think. I can go with the Berserker here, damage the Armored Trakar, and then bleed the Dalen Soldier, which goes through his um, through his armor, and I gain that armor back. There we go, with a nice hammer. So there they go, and then... Harold. Harold, Harold, Harold. Like this. Because he's just going for a soldier deck. There we go with that. That is fine. Because what I want to do... Is now play... The priest again. So that's five. And I don't think he'll be able to damage that straight up. So let's just... Get rid of one of Harold's pals. Of course, straight on the armor. Obviously. Um, let's end it there. I'm fine with that. And it keeps spreading out that damage. And of course, an Alzu Stunner to get rid of that. That is fine. I'm going to have to be careful now, though. Because uh, I'm... Short of a few units to do anything with. But... Uh, let's get Blue Boy Lugals on. Like this. He lost one of the soldiers. So that is fine. I do lack the means to damage myself now. Okay. That is also fine. So Blue Boy Lugals goes over there. Um, the Draco Turtle then, I suppose. This is, this is interesting. Um, Olaf, maybe. There we go. Olaf. Olaf is a good boy. I'm going high level with these cards. So that's that. So that's put the Draco Turtle on there. Because I want to avoid getting her, giving her cards that he can use. So the Draco Turtle next. So if there would be any, any damage my way, I would be hurting, but... That goes even further. Then we get uh, Vildkarl in between here. So that's gonna be damage, damage, and damage. Going up to 12, and I'm gonna wait with the last tick. There we go. Probably has a big removal card, or like that. And now she's gonna probably try and get my... Wait, what the hell? 
Did they change? Strategic withdrawal. Move an allied unit in Nilfgaard. Oh, that changed as well. Didn't know that. Move an allied Nilfgaardian unit to your hand and boost it by two, then play a card. Okay. That is interesting. Um, but I'm not getting any damage, so that's gonna gonna suck in a second. Um, there we go. And let's just damage the Harold's ball there. And hit the damage there. There we go. So these guys are all three, right? So that's four per card, but these guys are even further, I think. So I still have the... the... Yeah, it's a bit of an annoying deck, isn't it? But I uh, don't think I'll make it like this, but... He spread out his boost really nicely. There we go. Not that big of a loss there since I didn't even wasn't even able to use my abilities to the full there. But uh, there we go. On with that. And that's it for the introduction to the Iron Judgment expansion. Expect a lot more videos in the coming weeks about uh, fancy new decks. I might actually tweak this one because it actually a, is a pretty good idea, I feel like. And it's a bit different than what most people are going to go for. So the Insectoids, the Soldiers or the, uh, well, Armored based decks. This is just a sort of a hybrid deck of uh, Svalblood combined with Armor. Which I'm really looking forward to because I'm really into Scaliger, but we'll see more about uh, about that in the future. So thank you guys enormously for watching this introduction video to the Iron Judgment expansion. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.